Nandito na ulit tayo para sa panibagong episode, mga Tomasino. Good afternoon, Diesel. Grabe, ang bilis talaga ng panahon, no? March na naman. Parang last year lang, kasi simula ng lockdown. Tapos yun, one year na tayo simula noong mag-inyo. Oo oh, nga, Raven. Alam mo, ang hirap talaga ng hindi-sitin yung mga bagay na what could have been kung wala itong pandemic na to. Pero alam mo yun, and I'm so grateful and I'm so glad na kahit o paano, nandito pa rin tayo at tuloy na sumusulong kahit na sila rin tayo pa rin. Katulad na lamang nakaraan yung episode kung sa ating mga Tumasyan guest na rin ay patuloy pa rin ng kanyang laban bilang mga Tumasyan na di ko sa Tama yan, Diesel. Kudos sa'yo, Tomasino. Pero bukod sa anniversary ng pandemic, may isa pang mahalagang kaganapan ang ipinagdiriwang sa inyo. Tama ka dyan, Raven. Dahil ngayong buwan ng Marso ay pinag-iluwang natin ang mga kababaihan. Happy Women's Month to all women. Alam ba, Raven, na ang slogan nyo ng 15th Commission on Women for this year ay Puwana Laban sa Pandemia Kaya. And it is after long and long, women's leadership during this time of the pandemic. Actually, nang magsimula yung pandemia ng nakaraang taon, maraming kababaihan ang nanguna sa laban ng COVID-19 dito sa Pilipinas. Angel of Sin na donate ng tent para sa COVID-19 patients at frontliners at nag-initiate siya ng fundraising campaign for free mass testing along with answer yun. Siyempre, pati na rin, hindi na na isang kakangahang na nagsimula ng fundraising para sa mga frontliners. Alam mo, Raven, hindi mo talaga mapagkakayaan ang kababalihan ay hindi makapangyong ng matutulat sa ating kumpunan. At kahit sa ating universidad, maraming kababalihan ang napaka-empowered at Salamat, Bizel. Kaya naman, alamin natin ang tatak ng kababaihang tumatina sa ating episode ng Women's Month. Kaya't halina't sumama sa amin at alamin kung ano nga ba ang Raven, bagong episode na naman ng Tatak Tomasino at alam mo, hindi ko pa din talaga mapigilan yung self ko na isipin kung paano na lang kung face-to-face at nasa campus natin ginagawa tong show na to. Hindi ba parang mas masaya, Raven? Totoo yun, Diesel. Grabe, nakakamiss talaga sa studio at makita yung sarili natin sa mga TV around the camp. Diba, Diesel? Tama ka dyan, Raven. Alam mo, miss na miss ko na tayo yung campus and student life. By the way, Raven, ilang taon ka na pala nag-aaral sa USD? Alam mo, Diesel, almost three years na at kasulukuyan akong nasa Faculty of Arts and Letters or kilala ng marami bilang AD. Ayan, tamang-tama. Dahil nasa usapang taon tayo at ikaw ay taga-AD, alam mo ba na 125th anniversary na ngayon ng Faculty of Arts and Letters ngayong taon? Grabe. Tal- Oo, oh, Diesel, parang talaga namang napaninindigan ng AD ang pagiging isa sa mga pinakamatanda sa USA dahil patuloy sila na magandang edukasyon. At center of development ang mga kursong communication, journalism, at literature. While center of excellence naman ang philosophy. Siyempre, we have notable women from AB tulad na lamang ni Ms. Winnie Cordero, anong TV host, Gretchen Malalad, a 2005 Southeast Asian Games Karate Gold Medalist, at si Julie Yang Daza, na isang magaling na journalist at author. Grabe talaga ang mga artlets, very competent sa kanilang mga careers. Tama yan, Diesel. At isa pang alumna from ABIC, Miss Christina Pantoja Hidalgo, isang kagalang-galang na mano nila dito sa Pilipinas at buong mundo. Raven, kailangan natin malaman ang kasaysayan ng Faculty of Arts and Letters dahil ang mga students na nanggagaling dito ay hindi mo talaga mapagkakaila na nagiging competent professional sila sa kanilang mga sarili-sariling field of work. Totoo. Kaya pakinggan natin ang Faculty of Arts and Letters Interim President na si Mr. Paolo Jericho Manuel na ibinahagi sa atin ang kasaysayan ng AB. Sa pagkwento ng kasaysayan ng Faculty of Arts and Letters, lubos pa natin masaksihan ang competence ng AB community mula ngayon, mula noon, hanggang ngayon. Ito ang Gawing Tumasino. So, uh, my name is Paolo Jericho D. Manuel, and I'm currently the interim president of the Artlet Student Council. 
So uh, currently, I'm a third year philosophy student in the Faculty of Arts and Letters. Uh, currently, uh, the Faculty of Arts and Letters uh, holds the distinction of having the oldest student council in the Philippines. Uh, this because the Marcos administration banned student councils. And among all of the universities and, co- and colleges in the Philippines, it was in the Faculty of Arts and Letters of USD that the first student council was founded. So the AB Student Council can trace its roots from Pax Romana as the establishment of a student of a student council was largely the initiative of the officers of Pax Romana, specifically uh, Reynaldo Lopez, then president of the Pax Romana. Uh, the ABSC was founded at the first ever student council in the Philippines back in 1980. Uh, Reynaldo Lopez, the founder, would then serve as the vice president, while Ronald Llamas would be the first president of the ABSC. So currently, there are 13 degree programs in AB, uh, namely Asian Studies, Behavioral Science, Communication, Creative Writing, Economics, English Language Studies, History, Journalism, Legal Management, Literature, Philosophy, Political Science, and Sociology. And uh, the youngest of which is Creative Writing. Uh, In terms of recognition, AB is proud to be a center of excellence in philosophy. And I feel proud as a philosophy student. Uh, we are also proud to be a center of development in communication and a center of development in journalism. Uh, in terms of history, in 1611, the Dominicans established uh, Colegio de Santo Tomas at Intramuros. They founded the Faculty of Liberal Arts back in 1611. Then in 1896, they uh, dissolved the Faculty of Liberal Arts into the Faculty of Philosophy and Letters and the Faculty of Sciences. Then in 1926, they revived liberal arts as the College of Liberal Arts. So the pure and natural uh, sciences programs of the College of Liberal Arts were seeded to revive the Faculty of Sciences as a new college. And in turn, the programs left in College of Liberal Arts were seeded to the Faculty of Philosophy and Letters, formalized by a name change in 1964. So there's the Faculty of Liberal Arts and the Faculty of Philosophy and Letters. So they were merged to become the Faculty of Arts and Letters. I'm proud to be an AB student and it fills me with great pride that our faculty would be entering its... (laughs) There's a word for it, eh? 125th anniversary. Uh, There's entering its quasquicentennial anniversary. (laughs) That's a really mouthful word. So I'm not exactly a sentimental person. So my focus isn't on the fact that it is the 125th anniversary. Rather, I'm proud of how the Faculty of Arts and Letters has continually produced critical thinkers throughout those 125 years. After all, that is the essence of education. And I hope that the Faculty of Arts and Letters will continue to produce students with such a profound and excellent dialectical mind. It really puts a smile on my face that AB reflects this trend in academia because at the body of knowledge is constantly growing, then AB is also offering more and more degree programs in AB. So it's certainly a good thing. It's good that AB is offering new degree programs. Uh, which only demonstrate the extraordinary excellence of our faculty. Uh, ABS is definitely heading in the correct direction as it introduces more programs. The students in our faculty are evolving constantly. To give you an, an, an example, the undergraduate students of philosophy in AB have our own academic journal, Talisik. This is different from the academic journal of the faculty. Ah. This academic journal by the undergraduate student themselves. So they're publishing their own articles, they're publishing their own book reviews and other texts that are in nature academic, which is quite a, rec- a remarkable achievement. I mean, undergraduate students publishing journals. Diba? Can you imagine? That, that's not something you see uh, in all universities. This is such a rare sight. So the students in AB are definitely 
uh, constantly evolving. And I highly advise AB students to continue socializing with their friends as to face the online classes together. You can do it by playing Valorant together, for instance, or even setting up a Discord server, whatever floats your boat. And uh, aside from that, don't forget your responsibilities and duties as a student, pa din, ah. don't, 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 don't forget to fulfill your requirements. However, don't also forget that you are still human or to human. We need to socialize and we need to take care of our mental health. Take breaks every now and then, learn something new, listen to music. I mean, listening to music is a great way to relieve stress. Uh, without music, life would be a mistake. So, uh, continue doing your duties as a student while also recognizing that you need to make a conscious effort to maintain your mental health, to socialize with your friends so that you can get through uh, this really hard setup for learning. Grabe, ganito ang gawin Tomasino. Maraming may pagmamalaki na umaabot hanggang sa kasalukuyan. Ayun pala ang history ng AB Diesel. Kitang-kita nga naman ang pagiging confident nila, hindi ba? Tamang-tama ka dyan, Raven. Hanggang ngayon, ramdam na ramdam pa rin talaga ang competence na ipinapakita ng Faculty of Arts and Letters. Alam mo kasi, Raven, di lang Tomasino, instilled na kasi sa atin ang pagiging confident. Yes, tama. Sa mga Tomasino dyan, pwede ka maging confident sa academics at syempre, pwedeng pwede din sa extracurricular activities. Oo, oh, oh, tama ka dyan, Raven. Katulad na lamang ng pagsali sa mga competition sa loob at labas ng USD or di kaya pag, pagsali sa mga student organizations sa loob ng USD. Totoo, napakaraming ang organizations dito sa USD. Alam mo ba na merong 37 recognized student organizations sa USD? Oh, or even, actually, in fact, nandito ang presidente ng isa sa makabuluhang org sa USD. Siya ay galing sa USD Hiraya na isang advocate of safe spaces and intersectional feminism. Ang Hiraya ay isa lamang sa mga committed na Tomasino sa kanilang layunin. Very relevant ang role ng organization na ito kasi lalo na nat Women's Month ngayon, kaya naman pinaunlakan tayo ni Ms. Judy Borja, ang USD Hiraya President ng kanyang at binigyan tayo ng kaalaman sa kanilang commitment sa pagsagawa sa kanilang advokasya. Ito ang Labang Tumasing. Tinatag noong 2017, ang UST Hiraya ay isang samahan ng mga advocates of safe spaces and intersectional feminism, an inclusive movement set on achieving equality for all genders, races, religion, classes and identities. Hello everyone, I'm Judy Therese E. Borja. I'm the current president of USD Hiraya. Um, to begin with, USD Hiraya is the first advocacy-based organization in the university and at the same time, it's a homey intersectional feminist organization. So, we advocate for anti-violence against women, um, mental health, cultural diversity, and gender equity. We conduct webinars, seminars, community development, and such regarding those um, advocacies. And we also ensure that those social issues that are often overlooked and greatly affect the minorities will be still discussed inside our university. And lastly, kami yung, um, we ensure that USC remains a safe space for everyone and we aim to put an end towards gender-based violence and harassment. Um, as cliche as this sounds, talagang we aim to educate the Tomashan community. By Tomashan community, I mean like it's not limited to the students but as well as to the faculties, the staffs. So, lagi kaming merong webinars as mentioned and merong kaming community development because we want na talagang hindi lang sa USD yung advocacies na yun as well as mapunta siya sa ibang mga tao na kailangan talagang malaman yung mga advocacies na yun. And we also have the help desk. This is to ensure that victim survivors of harassment and gender-based violence are given proper assistance sa mga kailangan nila and to help them know that um, hindi lang sila nag-iisa in fighting for accountability and justice. And we also have um, a support group in our organization. This is to ensure that um, as advocates, kasi di ba parang madalas madami tayong uh, issues na kailangan malaman. So, 
it takes a toll on us. So this support group helps us cope and at the same time um learn with each other. And lastly, we have um, discussions within the organization wherein the director for advocacy talk about the advocacy in, with in-depth knowledge. So those members or the members will be able to know more about advocacy. I can think of the founders of GSD Hiraya as so someone who's very inspirational because to begin with, I'm not, as, I'm not really that vocal and empowered before, but because I saw them when I was in senior high school, Talagang parang, oh, whoa, women can do a lot of things together. And parang yung mga limitations na sinasabi sa atin before, hindi naman pala talaga siya limitations na mga babae. It's also empowering to see na they, they really fought for a lot of, um, they lobbied policies such as yung sa Safe Spaces Act. They helped in that. And... And then, then yung para every time na may sexual harassment case, they talk about it and ensure na victim survivors don't do not feel alone and at the same time um, help them in fighting for accountability and justice. I can also think of Miss Loretta Arroyo. I think she's the former president of USD Journalism Society. I just love how she handles herself and how she always asks about things. So brang like vocal and Ang talino, sobrang I look up to her, and at the same time I can think of Ate Bea Aquino, the former president of UST Psychology Society. She spearheaded the first ever mental health walk in UST, and I think that's very inspirational, especially for the student leaders. I think being empowered yourself will help, and being being around those who are empowered will help you further. Kasi kapag um, empowered ka, you know, talk about things. Parang, kasi diba, madalas kasi nahu-hold back tayo na, ala, ako lang mag-isa yung nagsasalita. So, being, being part of an organization that fights for those things, it's really empowering kasi madalas kasi talaga, parang, madaming magko-question sa'yo sa mga advocacies mo na, ah, inerte lang yan, ganito, ganyan. Pero, um, you become more empowered na, hindi, you become more strong. I remember before when I was in senior high school, my friend yung isang establishment. It's a food establishment. It's in sabi talo ng harass to yung mga waiters. And when I visited that establishment, I saw I I was wondering, akala ko ba si yung mga waiters dito? And then I saw yung safe space zone na poster ng UST Hiraya. And I think that's a very good example na. If you fight for, if you collectively fight for something, there, you can ensure na makakamit niyo yung, yung resolution to that. Um, as our motto says in our organization, it starts with us. Kasi if not you, then who? If not now, then when? Kasi as mentioned, collective action is really different. It, uh, it materializes our ideals and it ensures na yung mga dating normalized, na hindi naman dapat na normalized, is unti-unting na... Um, as long as we speak up, as long as we speak up together, we can always um, fight for something and ensure na magkakaroon ng resolution to that. Naway manatiling inspirasyon sa ating lahat ang progresibong pananaw ng mga nabanggit na mga Tomasina. Sa huli, walang sino man ang dapat magpadaig sa anumang uri ng pagmamalabis at paniniil. Sama-sama, protektahan natin ang karapatang pangkababaihan. Sama-sama, iparirinig natin ang nagkakaisang boses ng kababaihan. Sama-sama, ipamumulat natin sa taong bayan na hindi tayo babae lang, babae tayo. As part of being a competent, committed, and compassionate to Mashon, let's be involved in our community and never be silenced. Let's help those oppressed and further amplify their voices. Kaya sa mga tumasinong nakikibahagi sa layunin ng UST Raya, huwag mag-atubiling makipag-ugnayan sa kanila through their social media accounts, that is, at UST Hiraya. Babae ka, hindi babae lang. Patuloy ang laban ng mga kababaihan. Alam mo, Riven, grabe talaga yung, mis- mes- yung message ni Miss Borja. Sobrang empowering at sobrang inspiring. After that, naisip mo ba kung ano naisip ko? Alam mo, Diesel, pag-itapos 
kong maliwanagan sa lahat ng sinabi ni Miss Morha. Sa tingin ko, alam ko na kung anong gusto mong sabihin. Kaya go, sabihin mo na. Okay, sabihin ko na. Ganyan na ganyan talaga ang tatak ko, Masino, fellow Tomasians. Napaka-committed sa kanilang tungkulin at layunin. Iba talaga ang pagiging committed ng mga Tomasino. Patuloy sila sa pagpapalaganap ng awareness para ma-empower ang mga kamangrahihan. Hindi lamang sa loob ng USD, pero sa buong mundo. Alam mo, Riven, sobrang nakakaproud talaga malaman ang tungkol sa mga kapwa nating Tomasino na ginagawa ang kanilang makakaya para sa ipuunlad ng ating lipunan at ikaunlad ng marami. Tama ka dyan, Diesel. Siyempre, hindi matatapos ang show na ito na hindi tayo makikinig sa isang empowered and compassionate woman. Kaya't andito si Ms. Pauline Pareño, isang alumna from AB Political Science na ngayon ay Executive Assistant na sa Court of Appeals. Siya ay isang magiting na ina at isang babae na nagtatrive amidst the pandemic. Alamin natin ang kwento ni Ginang Pauline sa kanyang paglalakbay bilang mahabagin na babae, profesional, asawa at na. We are compassionate. Di lang sa iba, pati na rin dapat sa sarili. Ito ang Pusong Tomasino. Marami pa rin mga kurso ang matatawag na male-dominated o ang pagkakaroon ng mas maraming estudyanteng lalaki kaysa sa babae. At isa na doon ang kursong Political Science sa Faculty of Arts and Letters. Gayunpaman, hindi ito ibig sabihin na walang mga kababaihan ang nagtatagumpay sa pagtapos ng kursong ito. Isa na sa mga halimbawa ng kababaihang nagtagumpay mula sa Polsay ay si Attorney Pauline Duldulao Pareño. Hello, uh, my name is Attorney Pauline Rose D. Pareño. I'm 26 years old and I work for the uh, Presidential Communications Operations Office um, in the Office of Legal Affairs. I'm an attorney too and uh, my job description is basically I draft contracts, I review, um, uh, I, I review contracts and um, I also assist the Assistant Secretary when, uh, when it comes to his um, committees. And um, I graduated from UST. Uh, I had a degree in uh, political science. Okay. Uh, I chose political science as a course in college because um, I thought at first that it was a pre-law course and um, I had plans originally of entering law school talaga but I really wasn't sure of it at first and um, I, I was very fond of English, of the English subject so I wanted a course that has something to do with uh, social sciences. And I just thought that political science was a pretty cool name, actually. So um, I chose political science, and uh, yeah, it turned out to be interesting, naman pala as a course. Um, actually, I'm not sure if uh, it's correct to say that it's a male-dominated course, because in my time, parang uh, we had lots of uh, I had a lots of women classmates and batchmates. So I'm not sure. But maybe uh, that goes with um, the notion na parang dahil political science ay politics, ganyan, they think that um, most people who join politics are men. But uh, as of today, I think, hindi naman kasi yung political science, it's not really about politics. Eh. Parang it's about more about theories and um, ganyan. So hindi siya yung in a strict sense politics. Kaya, Parang we get that kind of misconception, but um, right now, um, I think both it's not really exclusive to men anymore. Um, the challenges I faced when taking up political science in law school was um, the amount of readings that you have to finish and memorize, and also the pressure that uh, goes with it. Because in both Paul Sci and law school, you are required, at least for me, to at least read um, at least eight hours a day and for some people, even more, to be able to make it out alive in your recitation, in your examinations. So it was, it was really difficult. And um, what compelled me to keep going was probably the fear of letting myself down or giving up without even trying. I'm a perseverer. I want to fight for something, especially if it will get me closer to achieving my dreams. So, kaya I had even if you had to sacrifice some of your family time, um, sacrifice some um, bonding with friends, and every every important matter in your life, 
parang um, to me all of that will be worth it because eventually in the end after I achieve my goal I can uh, do all those things naman na. Ngunit kahit marami mang pagsubok ang dumaan sa kanyang buhay kolehiyo hindi siya nakakalimot sa isang importanteng aral ang pag-aalaga sa sarili. My uh, Thomasian education um, was played a big part in um, performing good at work. I guess uh, basically or mainly because uh, or parang mainly the Christian values that uh, the Thomasian education has um, given to us. Parang kasi in my profession, especially in the legal profession, parang you have to have, have high moral standards Parang you have to come um, enter into that profession prepared. Parang you have to know where you stand on. Because if not, you're gonna get uh, parang swallowed by the temptations that will face you. You know that will come your way. Uh, my Samashan values, my Christian values, have helped me have this um, strong, or firm conviction in myself. Na if um, I'm confronted with that situation. I will uh, I will be upright and I will choose to do what's right. And I owe it not only to myself but to the public which I had sworn to serve for. And also to God of course who gave me this the opportunity to serve in this profession in the first place. So, and so uh, the question uh, the answer to the question is what do I do to express my compassion to myself? Um, I think I make sure I have a work life balance. Um, I actually am not the person who would bend over backwards for career because I think na um, there is more to life than career. Like once I get home or turn off my computer, uh, work is done for me and all the stress that comes with it, I just compartmentalize that. And um, I believe kasi that life is short and uh, we should know your priorities and um, work fuels my mental and physical health but family fuels my soul. Um, my advice to aspiring women who take, who wish to take a political science course and those who want to be future attorneys is that you have to persevere. If you have decided that uh, this is what you want in life, to become a lawyer, then do everything you can to achieve that. Like have faith in yourself and do not let others discourage you or conclude your future for you. But also remember to take care of yourself and know that uh, rest and time out is also part of the process. And always pray and um, understand and surrender everything because nothing is in our control. And just have faith that in every situation, God has a plan for you and is working for you. So, yeah. Gaano man karami ang responsibilidad na ating dinadala, nararapat lang na hindi natin makalimutan na bilang isang tumasino, ang isang pinakaunang responsibilidad natin ay ang pag-aalaga sa ating sarili. Maraming salamat sa iyo, Ms. Pareño, sa pagbabahagi mo sa amin kung paano kami maging compassionate sa aming mga sarili. Na-inspire ako doon, Tita. Sa lahat ng natutunan ko ngayon, actually, mas inspired ako maging confident committed, at compassionate na Tomasino. Ito talaga ang tatak Tomasino. Tamang-tama ka dyan, Riven. At syempre, kayong mga Tomasina ay magandang halimbawa sa mga values na yan. Kaya naman, ipinagbidiwang natin ang kababaihan ngayong Marso. Yes, ganito ang tatak ng Tomasina. Very empowered. Diba, Diesel? Grabe, this has been another great episode na punong-puno ng aral for fellow Tomasians. Muli, Happy Women's Month sa iyo, Riven, and to all the women who are watching us right now. Maraming salamat sa lahat ng nanood sa episode na ito. Sana'y marami kayo natutunan ngayon at patuloy pa natin itaas ang bandera ng mga kababaihan. At syempre, marami pa kaming gustong ibahagi sa inyo patungkol sa pagiging pamasino. Hindi kami mawawalan ng kasaysayan, facts at aral na ipapakita sa inyo tungkol sa Tomasian Identity. Kaya samahan nyo kami sa susunod na episode sa pagbabahagi namin ng kultura ng Tomas Nino. Muli ako si Raven. At ako si Diesel. At ito ang Tatak Tomas Nino.